welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. You're very welcome to another edition of our Dream Team podcast, where we're looking at the best Armagh team of the last 50 years in association with Dianus. This is a Dianus fundraiser that they've started to run, and there's cash prizes of £5,000, £2,000 and £1,000 for the team that's closest to the Dream Team that's picked by um, a panel of myself, Nell McCoy, Kieran McGinney, Jarth Burns and Joe Kiernan. I'm delighted to welcome on Stephen McDonald today and he's going to go go through his Armagh Dream Team and the best 15 Armagh players he's seen over the last 50 years. Stevie, it's a it's a difficult process and I know just talking to you off there, the easiest thing to do is just pick the O2 team and get it over and done with. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Um, I don't think I would get away with that though. Um, it's certainly, certainly not an easy task for anyone to select their best 15 players of the last 50 years. Um, Many, many great players have come and gone wearing the Armagh jersey. Um, lots of great players before the success of 2002. So trying to narrow that down to 15 players is a difficult task for anyone. And with Jim McCurry on last week, Stevie, he was the first person on to do it. And he had you out at wing half forward. I'm not sure if that's that would be your preferred <laughs> position. or No, no, definitely not. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't have been renowned for, for working... That position, but thank God it was back then. I played on that wing half forward nowadays, anyway. But um, <clears throat> listen, if you if you're being selected in the team with the with the names that have come and gone since then, then I'd be happy enough with that. But um, you know, I, I I was definitely more an inside man myself, in my opinion. In my opinion, anyway. <laughs> uh, Stevie, so obviously we'll start one to fifteen. Start with our our goalkeeper. I think there's six or seven selections for the goalkeeper. So who did yeah. you go with? Listen, it's it's a very difficult one uh, to start off. Uh, my first manager with Armagh was Brian McLinton. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see too much of Brian, but I often heard <clears throat> of how effective he was. He was probably the instigator of the the short and fast kickouts. Um, that, that we see a lot of nowadays. But my selection for this, it was between two players, Benny, Benny Tierney and, and Paul Hardy. And I've opted to go with Benny. So I have, um, I think, you know, when you look back at Benny's career, a lot of people probably underestimate how good and how effective he really was. The speed of Benny off his line to, to smother a shot was, was second to none. And many good battles I had with him in training sessions, in, in, particularly at the start of my career. And, you know, Benny was was a very focal goalkeeper, uh, very well organized, and and had his defense on their toes all the time as well. And um, very rarely, very very rarely give a ball away. So my 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 choice in that it was a tight call between himself and Paul. Paul was a very very good goalkeeper for us down through the years as well. But I've opted to go with Benny, um, simply on the back of you know his shot stopping, um qualities and his ability to um, organise his defence as well. And Benny, we all know Benny is a bit of a character and I'm sure he was good crack inside the, the changing rooms and weekends away and whatever yeah. else, but could he flip that, Stevie? Could he be serious before games as well? Was he a serious leader <clears throat> in the team and did he have a serious yeah. side to him as well? Listen, you, you always have to have, I suppose, the, the class entertainer, the class clown, as we know Benny by, but Benny knew when to I suppose keep the keep the team entertained, but he also knew when the when the right switch it on and, and focus his own intentions on, on his own game. And you know, it was a case of switching the, the light on and off. Benny just knew exactly when the time was right for, for doing that. And listen, he's a very um knowledgeable lad who he was and, and and serious about the game and serious about his position and he didn't want to affect anyone else's game either so he just knew when to keep the crack going and he knew when the right focus the minds and, and that the players focused their minds as well So your full back line then Stevie again the defence is there's loads of options through the last 50 years Um, who did you go for? Yeah. Well <clears throat> the first one is probably one of the easiest positions for me to select on the team Um, and, and the reason being is I come up against this guy time after time in training sessions of Mark Nelson numerous time in club games and during I suppose our dominant period he is probably the most effective man to man marker in the game and the McNulty um, he was always tasked with marking our opponent's danger men he, he, he marked the Gooch in the all Ireland final 2 Peter Canavan um, felt the brunt of, of and the McNulty often 
in, in big championship games as well. And the likes of Paddy Bradley, players they got there, players that were a real threat, you know, and it was tasked with marking them. Um, he was a tough, tough player, very, very fast. He anticipated the ball well. He was a strong player, very strong upper body, so he could always hold off men. And he just kept kept things simple. So he did. He, he knew what his, his role was within the team, you know, to stop his, his direct opponent from trying to have an, an impact on the game. And, and then they done that better than most. And probably for a five, six year period um, in the early noughties through to the mid noughties, he was definitely the best man to man marker in the game. And in the end training session, Stevie, is it full on gung ho marking into McNulty? There's no, <clears throat> no stepping back. No stepping back whatsoever. Like there was many, many nights. I, I would say there was very few nights that we didn't walk off the field without hitting each other, or without boxing the head of each other. Um, and and that was brilliant preparation for me as a, as an inside forward because whatever I was getting on the training ground in Callum Bridge. I was never going to be experiencing that come championship days because you have many eyes watching you, of course. But and uh, treated every training session as if it was a championship game, and I done the exact same. You know, I was coming up against, in my opinion, <clears throat> the best man marker in the game. And if I was able to get the upper hand on him, then I could cope with probably the tightest of defenders out there. So uh, you know, there's plenty of of good tough training sessions where and they come off bloody, they come off bloody. But the reality was, when we walked off the field, I was forgotten about. There was no grudges held, uh, and we we went about our business, and that was it. And who's full back on your team then, Stephen? Full back. Listen, there's many, many good uh, options here. Um, uh, you know, I, I look at the list, and there's quality right throughout it, so there is. But it's hard to leave Francie out of the team, isn't it? It, it really is, you know, such an iconic figure. Um, you know, I often remember pre pre championship games, you know, when you're out in the pitch in Clonus or in Cook Park, wherever it may be, and when the names are being called out, Francie always got the loudest cheer. And that was that was down to the the effect and the impact that he had amongst the RMA support as well. And that that was brilliant to see. But <clears throat> He was a solid player, so he was he was he was a very tough, tenacious player, and one that very rarely um was outclassed by his direct opponent as well. He came in late to the to the Armagh scene, but he had a major impact, and within two years picked up his uh, his all stars. So, um, a very you know impactful fullback, and one that definitely for the seven or eight year year periods that he he played for Armagh. Um, definitely deserved to be in the team. And who completes your full back line then, Stevie? If one spot left, yeah. Um, <clears throat> listen, there's lots of good players from years gone by. You know, we I often heard of the, the likes of Paddy Moriarty in in Porker in the current team is a tremendous uh, player. So he is Mark McNeil. You know, he's a, he was an ex club mate of my own. You know, when I was coming on to the scene, he was probably at the latter stages of his career, but. He was a fast, um, tricky opponent as well. And I always kind of judge a defender on, on how pacey they are as well. If they're really fast, I always find them difficult. Um, Andy Mallon, what a, what a player he was, what a cornerback. Um, probably one of the most difficult opponents you would ever come up against in training sessions. I hated to see Andy coming near me. But the player I've, I've gone with <clears throat> is his current senior selector, Kieran McKeever. Um, just a tremendous man-to-man marker, a tremendous footballer, and a player who could, who was adaptable to playing in the full back line or the half back line. Um, it, it would have been extremely difficult to leave Kieran out. He was just a brilliant fo- all round footballer. Um, his distribution was second to none. His tackling ability was just brilliant. He was tough and tenacious in the tackle, and if he was given the duty. Like man to man marking, I think we all seen the job that he done on Stephen O'Neill in two thousand and five, and and Stephen O'Neill was in his prime. That um, Kieran was up to the task as well, and so Kieran McKeever gets my last slot in the full back line. And into the half back line, then Stevie, there's a lot of debate around this one too. I don't know, Jim Curry <coughs> had a yeah. bit of trouble picking his half back line. So who have you gone with? <coughs> yeah, there's quite a few. Uh, quality players in the half back line. Um, you know, just before I came into the team, Martin McQuillan was there and, and had retired. And you know, 
my teenage years was growing up watching the likes of Martin play and I always thought he was a fantastic player. Um, it's gone down, obviously, in, in our math folklore about how good um, Paddy Moriarty was. And, <clears throat> you know, P- Paddy picked up a couple of all-stars for Arma as well. And for that, for that reason, I haven't ever seen Paddy play, play live, but, you know, I've often heard many good stories about him and I've heard many people play or say that he's one of the greatest Arma players of all time. So for that reason... It would be very difficult and very naive for me to leave Paddy Moriarty out of the team, so I put him in at number five. I know Jim McCoy had trouble between Paddy Mo and Kieran McGinney at six, so you've solved that problem. You've put Paddy Mo at five, yeah. and I assume Geezer's at six. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, in my opinion, the greatest six that we've ever had. Um, an inspirational leader, a great captain to have, and, and a player, you know, when he spoke in the dressing room in particular, he really, really got the hair stand on the back of your neck. Um, I often made his bad passes look like good passes, though. That, that's what I would always tell him. But um, <laughs> no, he was a brilliant, he was a brilliant driving force in that successful team in the early nineties, and you know nobody else deserved to lead the team the way he did in two thousand and two. And it was just unfortunate he wasn't a double all Ironman and captain the following year as well. But uh, you, you, there's not too many teams that'll be selected that'll not have won't have Kier McGinn at number six. Yeah, I think he's the one that's definitely on it on every team. Um, and your yeah. your number seven then, Steve. Who completes your halfback line? Number seven, once again, I'm going with a, a more modern type player, um, Aaron Kernan. Uh, it's a very simple selection for me. Aaron was a rule choice footballer, so he was still is still is playing and 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 playing particularly well for Cross McGlen. Um, you know, he, he's kept himself in serious good shape all those years and. You know, he was he was a great player to play with. You know, defensively, a lot of people always questioned his ability, but you know, that always was counteracted by his ability to, to drive forward, carry a ball forward, play a ball forward, first time going to support to play and chip him with scores on a consistent basis. And the impact that Arn had breaking into the team in two thousand and five was massive himself along with the likes of Kieran McKee were coming in two two massive additions to that team particularly at that time and it would have been extremely hard to leave Aaron Kiernan out of the team he's he's, a, he's just a simple simply a, a classy footballer you know from such an early age right through to playing now he controls games he knows where the ball should be he knows where the ball has to go he knows where he should be on, on a pitch and um, just uh, he, he simply has been a Rolls Royce footballer I'm moving on to midfield then. Steve, who's your midfield pairing on your dream team? Yeah. Um, number one in the midfield slot uh, goes to probably Armagh's greatest ever manager, Joe Kernan. Um, Joe was a class in the midfield. I've seen many clips of Joe playing. He scored a couple of goals in the all Ireland final in 77. Um, picked up an all-star too as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to look over over overlooked the likes of Colin McKinstry, who was an all star himself. Um, but for I suppose the impact that Joe had on my career as well as anything else, it'd be very difficult to leave him out. So um probably the first father and son to make the team maybe in my selection anyway, but um extremely difficult to, to overlook Joe Kern on this occasion. And I think Joe was one of those players for a long period of time that was a dominant force in Arma uh, teams. And who's beside him then in midfield? Beside him is is very easy for me, Paul McGrain. Um an absolute workhorse, a tremendous uh, character in the dressing room. Uh, similar to to Kieran McGinney, the leadership qualities that that Paul um held and possessed were, were second to none. And he was just a, a brilliant out, out, outstanding competitor in the middle of the park. You know, once we had Paul McGrain in there. Um, we knew that we were never going to be dominated and he came up against some of the best midfielders in the game at the time Kieran Whelan Dara O'Shea and none of them ever got the better of him so you know I would say um, that Kieran, or Paul McGrain definitely deserves a spot on this team um, you know some of the balls that he would put into me I, I just simply knew once Paul McGrain got the ball make your run because he wasn't going to toe tap it he wasn't going to bounce it it was simply coming in and Paul had a great saying all the time get it into the mixer and that that's that's the fact of it if it wasn't in the mixer we were never going to score and he drove her into us more often than not 
And in terms of leadership, Stevie, obviously Geezer was the the man at centre half back, but Paul McGrain, he was a close second, wasn't he? And not in terms of driving the team on in two thousand and two on for the length of time he played. Yeah, he definitely would have been second in command. But we we had a team full of quality leaders. You know, you look at the McIntyres, the McNulty's, Jim Martin, Benny Kearney. You know, there was such a massive array of, of quality and and committed players and driven players that leadership came from everywhere but you know the driving forces were definitely coming from Geezer and Paul McGrain and into the forward line then Stevie your half forward line who gets in there yeah this is where it gets really really difficult <laughs> for me <laughs> um, this is a hard one now uh, let me see I'm just, I'm just having a look at the names again Um, yeah I I kind of had a had an idea who was going to put into this role, and the the guy I'm going to pick was, was um he got my career up and going, so he did. He helped me a lot when I broke into the Armagh team, um in terms of right blooding me into it, um giving me a feel for the county game, but also you know correcting weaknesses in my game and um ensuring that you know I improved in those areas and to make myself a better footballer and it was simply um the quality of his passes were, were, were exceptionally good as well. Cal O'Rourke makes the number 10 position for me. Um great left footer, great free taker, a fantastic passer of the ball and um you go back to two thousand, probably his greatest year for Armagh. Um you know, Kerry targeted yeah, Cal in the in the replay in the All Ireland semi final and and done a job on him and apart from that there only for that we probably would have made it to the All Ireland final that particular year but Cal was was a brilliant player exceptionally good but young players coming into the team he had me a lot he had Ronan Clark a lot coming in as a youngster and um just a fantastic forward a fantastic scoring forward you know people underestimate Cal's ability to, to score points. From play and from freeze, and he just had a great knack for doing it. I think Cahill was one of them unlucky players, Stevie, that didn't. I think he was on the panel in 02, but he didn't feature, obviously, um, in the run up to the <coughs> So he was one of them unlucky players that soldiered for years and maybe just, just was coming to the end of his time by 2002. Yeah, he, he was coming to the end of his time. He did, he did make an appearance in a couple of games in 2002. I remember him coming on in the replay game in Navin against Sligo and the Sligo midfield had, were starting to get a wee period of dominance and Cal came in and upset the whole um, area for them and you know he wasn't afraid to get stuck in and, and allowed the likes of Paul McGrain and John Paul to go and start dominating the game again and that's what happened and, and, and the impact that Cal had that particular day um, Sometimes go on no, goes unnoticed, but um he was one of the main reasons that we we ended up getting to the final as well because he, he just knew what to do when when the time was right in certain games and I think Joe used him effectively. But unfortunately for Cahill at that particular time, he was coming to the end of his career. And centre half forward then Stevie who makes it there. Centre half forward, <laughs> plenty of good players. You know, um, I've often heard how good Fran McMahon was. Uh, Jimmy Smith, Joe, uh, John McEntee, Barry O'Hagan, Kieran McGurk, lots and lots of good players. How who who do you leave out here? Like um, it's this is a difficult one, probably the most difficult one um for me. Then you know I often heard how good Jimmy Smith was, and he was the captain in nineteen seventy seven. But I'm gonna select the player that I seen as a teenager growing up, and I always loved him. He's no longer with us, and that's Gary McGurk. Um, what a player he was! What a left foot, two left footed players in the forward line. So I can maybe focus more on the right footer for the for the rest of it now. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> Gary McGurk was a was a fantastic player, brilliant playmaker, a tough boy. Um, loved the rough and tumble of of hard championship games. Uh, probably one of the most um expertly taken penalty penalty takers that I've ever seen. Um always kept it low and right to the corner and was very unfortunate during the period that, that he played for Armagh because he deserved to, to pick up silverware um in, in the Armagh colours, but it wasn't to be. But Kier McGurk was a player that I always admired. Yeah, going to watch games as a teenager and he makes my eleven. 
And 12 then, Steve, who completes your half-forward line? <clears throat> 12, this is simple. It's Ashley McConville. Um, uh, if anyone leaves Ashley now at number 12, they need their head looked at. Um, <laughs> an outstanding forward, an outstanding uh, footballer. And when we really needed a score, when the chips were down, you got the ball to Ashing. You look for Ashing, you know, um, just a player who raised confidence, a brilliant free taker, um, a, a player that you're delighted to have in your team and not against you, um, more often than not. And, you know, you, you couldn't really talk enough about Ashing, you know, his matter collection says it already, probably the most outstanding club for club footballer of all time as well. Um, Ashing was a fantastic teammate, fantastic board, and um, just has to make it in the team, simple as that. And you mentioned that, Stevie, when Armagh were under pressure, you would look to him. Would you, if you had the ball, would you physically seek out Ashing, knowing that if somebody's going to kick the winner or kick an equaliser, it's, it's going to be him? Yeah. <clears throat> well, listen, we knew as a team, you know, if you're under pressure and we need to score, get it to the scorers. Um, and it, there was three or four players you had to do that. Um, the ball got to Oshin a lot of the times and we knew once it was in his hands, he was able to, to do the job with it. He was able to get the, the point or the goal, whatever maybe, or kick the, I suppose, last ditch free kick to earn us a draw or to earn us a win, one point win, whatever it was. And he was the man to, in my opinion, you know, uh, if you ask me who who do you want the ball to go to, you always wanted to go to Ashen because he used he used confidence. You don't want to give it, you don't want to give the ball to somebody who probably wanted to shirk the responsibility. Ashen never ever shirk responsibility. He always demanded the ball in pressure situations, and that's what you want from a forward. And the full forward line then, Stevie, um, you played with plenty good ones yourself. So who makes it? Yeah, um, the full forward line, and I, I certainly won't be picking myself. <laughs> that, that will be for others to to select. But um, the first player in in the full forward line, once again, I'm looking at the list here, and there's some unbelievable uh, forwards in here. Players that are, you know, they've got talent hanging clean out of them. But um, the first player that I'm going to go with, I haven't seen a whole pile of, but I met him on a number of occasions, and I've seen a few videos of him. Would have been Johnny Corbin. Um, you know, from the stories that I've heard and what I've led, what I'm led to believe, you know, he is one of the most outstanding inside forwards, not only for Armagh at the time, but throughout the country, throughout Ireland. And Johnny Corbin um, makes my 13. I, I met him a few times when I was playing the international East down in Australia. He's very, I suppose, available to myself and Kieran and and Paul McGrain and Aaron Kieran and all. So, you know, he looked after the Armagh guys particularly well, but. Um, you know, from what I've heard in the past and what about his um experiences on the on the playing field, he's 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 making it in a thirteen, I think. Um, he scored a goal against Kerry that's often been talked about in the National League game. I think it was maybe in Lurgan, it was a volley or something they got there. So um, you know, a player who has the cheek and the ability and the skill set to, to score a volley against Kerry definitely should be uh, considered. And full forward line then, Stevie, your full forward position, sorry, who makes it? Um, a player who I partnered with for, for many, many years. Um, you know, it was a fantastic partnership. It was, I knew his game, he knew my game, but he was a very smart, intelligent player. Um, the impact that Ronan had on the 2002 um, team can never be underestimated. He marked Paddy Christie in the All Ireland semi final and took him to the cleaners. He marked Seamus Moynihan in the All Ireland final and took him to the cleaners. Um, two players who were seen as the two best full backs in the game at that particular time. Ronan Clark was 19 years old. You know, he, he, he was just such a powerful player, a very intelligent player. You know, he always could score with left foot, right foot, um, take a ball under, or take a ball under pressure. But also linked the ball well with with players around him, and I was one of those players. Thankfully, lucky enough to, to play alongside Ronan Clark, and um, you know he simply just has to go in at number fourteen. Uh, such was the presence, and and I suppose 
the impact that he had on Armagh football. And Stevie, that partnership you had with Ronan Clark, was that instant or did you do a lot of work on that or did you immediately head it off once he came in or how did that develop over the years? Um, I don't think it was just as good as what it could have been in 2002, believe it or not. He only made his breakthrough that particular year, but um, as the years went on, the partnership developed through many, many training sessions together. You know, when you're playing alongside each other, um, night after night in training and coming up against tough, tenacious fullbacks like Justin and Andy McDulty, Andy Mallon, um, Francie Valley, Kieran McKeever. Then you have to learn to play close together and, and understand each other a wee bit more. And it was never a case of Ronan Clark winning the ball and doing it all himself or himself uh, doing the same. You know, we had to involve each other and um, we, we built up a good understanding on the training ground. And thankfully, developed that in the big championship games as well. And um, we just we just knew each other's game. It, it, it was it was simply on the back of of you know it was something that we had to do because we knew come championship time when you're coming up against the likes of uh, Ryan McManaman or or players they got there that if if we thought we were going to do it all ourselves, then we were wrong. But we needed to develop a partnership that was going to be a threat. And I remember a conversation with Jack O'Connor back in 2006. Um, you know, we had a very, very good first half um, performance between the two of us in, in Crook Park in the quarterfinal. And he, he actually went round for it. Jack O'Connor went round behind the goals to watch us and, and to see how he could, I suppose, stay for the impact that we were having on the game. And he, 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 he told me at that particular, particular time that. It was the best partnership he's ever seen in the inside line, um, in, in Gaelic games. So that was not a bad um piece of, uh, I suppose, credit that we we got from from the top manager at the time. But uh, Ronan Clark was simply a fantastic teammate and a brilliant full forward. And Stevie, who completes your team then? Who gets the the number fifteen slot? Yeah, a guy who quite often doesn't get the credit that he deserved. Um, maybe he did. In the earlier stages of his county career, but when Stephen Clarkey came through, he he switched his game from the scoring forward to the working forward, and that was Jamer Martin. Um, I couldn't leave Jamer out out of this team. What a player he was! Um, strong, powerfully built. Um, great ability to take a ball under pressure. Great ability to score goals, kick points, pressure points. We all remember his point just before half time in 0-2, which was critical for us. You know, instead of getting five down, we were in four down, and that that's massive in in terms of um a game of that magnitude, and just the overall impact that Jim and Martin had on Armagh football, particularly in the in the in the late nineties, is second to none. You know, his performance in the Ulster final, and no Arshin put the scoring credit for that uh, performance that day, but um. Performance of Chamber that day probably um catapulted Armagh to the next level, and he's just such a quality player. So he was an, and a great guy and a great teammate, and one that we always knew if we hadn't got the ball, that he was making life extremely difficult for our opponents breaking out of 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 their defence uh, with it. And I suppose Stevie, you you've picked um a strong team. We'll just run through it here. You've Benny Tierney in nets, and a McNulty, Francie Bellew, and Kieran McKeever. The half back line then is Paddy Moriarty. Kieran McGinney and Aaron Kiernan, Joe Kiernan and Paul McGray in midfield, the half forward line Cahill O'Rourke, Kieran McGurk and Oshin McConville, then Johnny Corvin, Ronan Clark and Dermot Marsden. All them players have obviously all retired, there's, there's none of the modern crop in it. If there was one player from that team that you would have to take into the today's team or you wish that we could take back for um, Kieran McGinney's pawn now, who would it be? <laughs> Listen, uh, there's a number of players that I think are, are sheer quality in, in, in the team now. Stephen Campbell's a quality player. Ryan O'Neill's a quality player. Rory Gregan. Um, Aidan Forker. Um, listen, you're putting me on the spot. I, I, I think for consistency and level of performance and durability and also being able to play in any position, Aidan Forker would be a player that you, you'd seriously consider because you could put him in the corner forward our cornerback and he would play equally as well in any position and he's a player that never lets arm down he's a fantastic um, fantastic player fantastic warrior loves the rough and tumble of championship games as well and unfortunately he came into the scene 
just as I was leaving it and I never got the opportunity to play with him. He would have been one of those players that I would have loved to have had the opportunity to play alongside. But um, Aidan Forker for me has been a, a great servant for Armagh football and deserves some silverware. You know, I think Rain is going to become something special for Armagh. <clears throat> um, he, he's still at the very early stages of his county career and he's a player that I would have loved to play with as well. But um, over the course of of the 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 thing that Aidan Fork was there, then I'd have to select him. So that's Steve McDonald's dream team, Armagh's best team of the last fifty years. The fundraiser run by Darren News, and we've teamed up with them to do a couple of podcasts with a couple of ex players and managers over the next couple of weeks and months, and to pick everybody's dream team. So make sure to go on to the website. It's armagh.dreamteam.co.uk, and you can select your dream team of the last fifty years. Steve, thanks for coming on and picking your dream team. I appreciate it. No problem at all. Thank you.